So we've recently reviewed the Legion Pro 5i and 5 gaming laptops. These are some amazing laptops that you can fully configure from the Lenovo store. Now usually when I'm buying from a configurable store, I buy the lowest spec I can possibly get and upgrade it myself, and therefore save a fair amount of money doing so. And one of the things I was disappointed with this year is the actual 5i version came with slower RAM than the actual Ryzen version. We got 4,800 on the Intel and 5,200 on the Ryzen. So in tonight's video, I'm gonna be upgrading the SSDs. We've got two bays in here. I'm gonna try and put eight terabytes in there, two times four terabytes. I'm also gonna test my Fury 5600 megahertz kit in this Intel version to see if we can increase the speed of this RAM. Now, in order to actually upgrade the SSDs, what I'm gonna be doing today is actually cloning the drives. Now, you can easily do a fresh install with an actual USB stick with Windows 11 on it. All the drivers are on Lenovo's website in the support section but this does take quite a while, and I find it much easier these days just to clone the drive. Now we're gonna be using some Western Digital Black four terabyte drives. Now these come with a Cronus cloning software, and it's actually free if you get it from the Western Digital website. I will link it in the description down below, so if you get these Western Digital drives, use their software to clone, it won't cost you a penny, and basically you can clone directly to these drives and then shut the machine down, swap the drive over, and you're instantly up and running where exactly where you left off before you cloned it. This is really handy, you know, faffing around with drivers and all your files are still in place. Now, because we've got two SSD drive bays, you could open it up, put the actual second drive in the second bay and clone from one to the other. But just for ease of use and only opening the laptop once, I'm gonna use a Sabrent external drive bay. Now, this is just a USB-C, drive bay, and it's incredibly easy to use. You've got a little button here. I open it up, slot the drive in, close it up, completely toolless. I then plug it in to the actual laptop itself, and I'm ready to clone it externally. So then when I open up the laptop, I open it once and put both the drives in ready. Now I've already installed the Acronis software, so you literally install it. And because you've got the Western Digital SSD plugged into the external drive into the laptop, it'll pick it up and automatically let you use the software. We're gonna use the clone option in the tool section, and we're gonna clone the primary drive to this new Western Digital. So I've got a one terabyte in here, and it's gonna then clone to the four terabyte and increase the size so it's all ready to go once I install the new drive. Now once you select the clone option and chosen the primary drive to the actual new drive, follow the prompts and let it do its thing. Once the actual cloning has finished to the new drive, shut down the laptop, make sure it's shut down and unplug it. So then we're gonna turn it over and open this laptop up. Now I do recommend you use a decent laptop toolkit. I've got the iFixit Electronics Essentials here. It's quite a cheap toolkit, but it's got everything I need in my day-to-day -day use opening and maintaining these laptops. You just need a Phillips screwdriver for the 10 00 Phillips screws. Now, when I turn my laptop over, I do like to use a mouse mat or something to put the actual laptop on so I don't scratch the lid. Then once I've done that, I take my 10 screws out. Now this year, the Legion is actually reasonably easy to get the base plate off. Last year and the previous few years, it's been an absolute nightmare trying to pry this actual base plate off itself. Now I've got a suction cup in this Essentials Toolkit, so just make sure you damp the actual suction cup itself, place it into the front middle of the actual base plate. Now carefully pry that up whilst holding the actual front of your laptop with your hand, and the whole base plate will just pop straight out without doing any damage, and it's very, very simple this year. So once we've got the base plate off, we've got full access to everything we need from now on in. Now, before we start doing any work on the laptop, you really should unplug the battery just to make sure that you don't do any damage to the laptop. Now, I like to use my pry tool and a finger on either end of the actual connector to just pull the actual battery connector out of the socket, and make sure it's just sitting on top, nice and safe. Next, we're gonna move the RAM shroud. Now, Lenovo always put a little clip over the top of the RAM sockets to keep them safe and well protected. It's nice and easy, use your pry tool just to pop that RAM shroud off, put it to the side, and we've now got access to the two dim slots. Now you just unclip the RAM with the two little retention brackets either side of the actual RAM chip. The RAM will pop up and you can slide it nicely out towards you. Once you've taken the old RAM out, take your new RAM, make sure you correctly align the pins up because there's only one way this RAM chip will fit in. Slide it in at a 45 degree angle. Once you've slid it in, push it in until the actual retention arms clip in place. You'll hear a satisfying clunk when the actual RAM chip is seated in place and you know it's well held. Do the same for the second chip, and that is your RAM now done. Once you've finished the installing the RAM, put the RAM shroud back in place. Be very careful, there's some very tiny metal clips that hold the RAM shroud in place. Just line it up and push it down, it locks back in. 
Now that we've actually completed the RAM upgrade, we're gonna just change our SSDs. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is put my primary drive into the laptop. This is the SN850X four terabyte drive. Now this drive is a double-sided drive, but it doesn't have many chips on the back. And when I tried to put it in to the primary drive, unfortunately, there were some connectors underneath that SSD slot that were fouling me from actually locking it in. So unfortunately, I cannot get a double-sided four terabyte drive in the primary bay. Now the good thing is you can use either of these actual bays to boot from. So when I opened up the secondary bay, there's actually nothing stopping this actual double-sided RAM chip fitting. So the SN850X then goes into the secondary bay and I put the heatsink back on top once I've installed that in. Now that means that I cannot use my second Western Digital SN850X I was hoping to use for my secondary drive. Now fortunately, I did have a P3 Plus 4 terabyte drive. Now this is one of the only drives that's four terabytes in size and single-sided. Now it's not as fast as the SN850X, but as I'm gonna be using this as a games drive, I'm not so bothered about the actual speed of this one. I just wanted the four terabyte size because games are getting so big these days. Now being single-sided, absolutely no problems fitting in that primary bay. Heat sink back on top. Once you screw both those heat sinks in and you make sure the RAM shroud is seated, plug your battery connector back into place and then pop your base cover back on and screw on your 10 Phillips screws. So that's it, you've now upgraded your laptop. Really quite straightforward. And other than the fact I couldn't use a double-sided drive on the primary bay, everything was very easy. So now we're gonna plug the actual power supply in and turn the power on. Now, unfortunately, it does take a long time when you first power these laptops on to initialize. So don't panic when you turn this laptop back on and it takes ages to boot for the first time. Personally, I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and by the time I came back, this laptop had booted up. Otherwise, I'd be sitting there fretting, pressing the power button. So now that I'm in, running from that new SN850X really fast primary drive. I decided to run Crystal Disk Mark just to test the actual speeds on these drives. Now obviously the SN850X is one of the fastest four terabyte drives you can find, giving us absolutely incredible scores for a primary drive. And it's absolutely perfect for your primary drive where you've got a lot of OS use and anything else you might wanna do that does heavily utilize that disk. Now my secondary drive, the P3 plus four terabyte single-sided drive, running the Crystal Disk Mark on that one as well, still gave very impressive scores. But the problem with this drive is if you hammer it for a long time, it does drop off once that cache runs out. But for my games drives, this is absolutely perfect. Games load incredibly quickly still, and you're not getting massive amounts of writes or reads when you're running the games. So all in all, SSD wise, I'm really quite pleased. Although I would have preferred if I could have fitted the two SN850X in this machine. But you know what? At least I managed to get the primary drive with the faster drive. Now, as we look to the RAM, I installed the Fury 5600 megahertz RAM kit in this laptop and it did boot, which is good news, but unfortunately it ran at 4800 megahertz and this was really disappointing. I've had other laptops that came with 4800 megahertz this year and when I've put the 5600 megahertz in, they have run a lot faster. So I was really disappointed when I initially saw it's only running at 4800 megahertz. But then I decided to test ADA64 on the original RAM and also on this new 64 gigabyte kit. And although it is only running at 4,800 megahertz, because it is faster RAM, it has a lot faster timings. And as you can see in the ADA benchmark, the RAM timings are incredibly quicker than the initial 16 gigabyte kit that we had, leading to much better ADA64 benchmark scores. This really does make quite a difference. And just to show you an actual benchmark, this in real use, running Geekbench 5 benchmark has got a big difference over the restock 16 gigabyte. So if you're gonna upgrade the RAM on this machine, if the price difference between the 4,800 megahertz and the 5,600 megahertz is quite a lot of money, save the money and get the 4,800 megahertz. But if you find, like I did, there wasn't a lot of difference in price between the two, get yourself the 5,600 megahertz and have the increased CAS latency on that RAM. Plus, if you ever wanna use it in another machine, it's always beneficial to have that faster RAM. So there we go, I've taken my base spec Legion Pro 5i laptop and I've maxed out with eight terabytes of SSD and 64 gigabytes of high-speed RAM. And it does make a massive difference to this great all-round package. And I've done it at an absolute fraction of the cost of the price that Lenovo charge you to do the same thing. Now, as always, I will put the links for all these products in the description down below, just in case you wanna get the same products that I've got here. There'll also be the links to the Acronis software from Western Digital and the Lenovo support website in case you want to get any of the updated drives from Lenovo. And as always, if you have any questions on this or anything else, pop it in the description down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thank you for watching.